There are so many different ways to farm gold in classic season of discovery, and today I'll share my top 10 gold making methods in 2024. In the southeastern part of Stranglethorn, you can loot these bottles, and in the bottles there's a small chance that you will also get scrolls that you can sell on the auction house. The scrolls you're mainly looking for is scroll of agility and strength, as these will sell for a high amount of gold on the auction house. The price for these all depends at what time of the day you try to sell them, I mainly post mine when people are about to raid Black Fathom Deeps. If you're an herbalist, then also pay attention to any nearby strangle kelps. I usually pick up these while I wait for the new bottles to also respawn. And the next time you need to take a break from the farm, then just head to Booty Bay and look out for this vendor. Here you can purchase mana potions and greater healing potions. Yeah, it is a resupply, but if you manage to purchase them, then you can also resell these onto your auction house for anywhere between 10 to 20 times the winter price. Another supplier where you can also make a profit is this one in Desolus, where I always purchase the Scroll of Strength, Scroll of Agility, and also sometimes Scroll of Stamina. And then I also like to purchase the different cooking recipes. Some of them you can flip right now, or some of them you could also keep for phase 2. You can find the NPC in Desolus, and it's patrolling on the road. It's not always standing at the same location as it is right now. While you're in this zone, then you should also go to the southwestern part. Here there will be this water environment and you can dive down and loot some different cages. In these cages there's a small chance that you will get the big iron fishing pole. On my server these sells for anywhere between 20 to 40 gold depending on the day. If you're a druid or a warlock then you'll benefit a lot from underwater briefing, but you could also purchase the elixir of underwater briefing so you can keep farming without having to pay attention to your breath. Remember, these creatures will also be high level, so there's a high chance that you will eventually pull these when you try to open up the cages. In my opinion, the druid is definitely the best for farming this. You can easily swim away quickly if you accidentally pull something, and because of your aquatic form, then you don't have to pay attention to your breath. However, a rogue isn't bad either, as you can always vanish in case you accidentally pull a creature. The reason why the big iron fishing pole is selling for a high amount is because it allows you to fish in higher level zones and increase your chance of successfully fishing without failing. I'm currently also using this on my main character to prepare for phase 2 but also to farm a lot of gold in phase 1. I'll get back to this farming method later in the video. The material that has probably made me the most gold in phase 1 so far is the grave moss and there are so many different locations where you can farm this. The reason why it's in high demand is because you use it to craft the shadow protection potions that some people like to use in BFD. To gather the grave moss, you will need to be an herbalist, and the zone where I'm currently farming isn't desolate in the middle. It seems to be an area not many people know about, because in the zone you can't really do many other things besides doing herbalism, as it's a high level zone. The good thing about this area is that 50% of the spawn locations is pretty much not protected by enemies. However, there will be some situations where you'll need to deal with this. Therefore, I like to be a stealth character, but you could also be a hunter or a warlock, then your pet will be tanking the enemies while you're looting the herb. But I honestly also find it quite nice to be a rogue, as you can always just sprint away or even vanish. So make sure to take advantage of this gold farming potential, as there's going to be way more people here anytime soon. And no, you don't even need to be level 25 to start doing this. As long as you have a pet, then you should also have enough time to gather the herb and run away. The insane thing is that there are so many spawn points, therefore there can also be two spawns up at a time, and the respawn time seems to be in between 2 to 3 minutes for each of these. Another solution is to go to the western part of Duskwood in Raven Hill. In Raven Hill, there's a lot of potential areas for farming the grave moss as well, and there's usually not too much competition if you do this early hours or when most people are raiding. Else, it can be quite crowded, and that's why I like to go to Desolus instead. I did, however, try to farm here for 30 minutes when there wasn't too much competition, and I honestly ended up making quite a decent amount of gold. So if I had done this for an hour, I would probably also have made almost 25 gold. I've also tested the farm in Scarlet Monastery, and I feel like this is such a bad idea. If you have two accounts, you could probably pull it off pretty decently, as all of these spawn locations are also protected by high level elites, but it will also require you to vanish on both of your characters. Talking about having two accounts, then one thing I actually enjoy is to use one account to pull high level enemies while the other character is looting chests. This is a great way to farm higher level green and blue items. 
but yeah, it requires two accounts, so all of you will probably not be able to do this. Unless you have a lot of gold in Wrath of the Lich King and you don't plan to play Cataclysm, then you could spend all of your gold on WoW tokens and redeem this as game time for your second account. A big benefit of this is that now you can also solo dungeon elites a lot easier for rare items that sells for anywhere between 20 and all the way up to 60 gold on my server right now. But else you don't really need two accounts for this, as long as you have some decent gear or if you're playing a hunter. The dungeon where I'm currently farming these rare items is Reservoir Crowl in the southern part of Barrens. One material that still sells for a high amount of gold is this pearl, and a new location I find quite useful is in South Shore, a well in Hillspread Foothills. The reason why I prefer this area is because there's next to no bots here, and the enemies you're killing is also higher levels, so because they're in between level 28 to 30, then they also drop high level green and blue items that you can easily sell for a high amount of gold on the auction house. And if you can't find the enemies I'm currently slaying, then it's all the way down at the southeastern part. Here the enemies is always between 28 to 29, and not level 30 or 31, as they could be a bit more to the north. There's two other options, the first one being where you head to the southwestern part of Wetlands. Just below Manifold Harbor, you can find this area with Murlocs, where you can also get the Clam. And just like the previous area, because these enemies is between level 28 and 29, then the green and rare items that drop usually also sells for anywhere between 5 and all the way up to 150 gold. The third and last option would be to head to the western part of Hillspread Foothills, here you can also find more murlocs and the level range is the same as before. If you have leveled up fishing, then you can also grant even more gold simply by fishing in the different fishing schools. And talking about this profession, then earlier in the video I also mentioned I was preparing for phase 2. The way I do this is simply by using fishing to gather different iron bound trunks and methyl bound trunks. These trunks contain materials that you can use to power level your profession in the next phase green items, consumables, and so on. So you can either farm these for your own preparation or sell them on the auction house for a decent amount of gold to anyone who prepare, or keep it as an investment for phase 2. Talking about investments, then a couple of weeks ago I also released an investment video together with an investment document. And if you purchased the investment document back then, then you can now also download an updated version that I've just released. This update can of course be downloaded for free if you have already purchased the guide, else you can purchase it with the link below the video. Another thing that has also made me a decent profit is the neutral auction house. Sometimes I either sell items here or purchase them. The opposite faction could for example sell an item quite cheap on the neutral auction house that I could then repost on my own faction's auction house and make a profit. Some of you has also asked me about the auction house add-on that I use, and the name of this is Auctionator. You have the standard 3 buttons plus additional 4. In shopping, you can make a new list and this you can just give a name, in this case, Test. Now you'll see the shopping cart being empty. In the search term, you type in what you're looking for, in this case, Strangle Kelp. And the moment I've found these, then at the top right corner, you can add them to the list. And this you then do with every single item you'd like to add to your shopping list. In this case, I will then do it with medium letter as well. And yeah, I just type in the name and add it to the list. And the next time I go to the auction house, then I can just press on everything I'm looking for, instead of actually having to remember the name and typing in what I need to search for. So here, I just left click on the item and it automatically search for it. When I need to sell items, it's also so easy. Then you just go to selling, and here you'll see every item you can sell in your inventory. You press on the item and it will now scan for the most cheapest. Then you can post it either as a stack or in different stacks. And it will always post this one copper cheaper so you're not going to undercut and lose a lot of gold or silver. Two herbs you can still sell quite fast and also make a big profit on is the Wild Steel Bloom and Swift Vistle. The Swift Vistle you collect when you're farming Briarthorn. And why I found these, I will share with you right now. First, I will share my routes for Alliance and then move on to the Horde and also do the exact same with the Wild Steel Bloom. In Westfall, I move in the same shape as a square, so all the way up to the left, down, and to the right. And this I just repeat over and over. Another zone where I like to farm these is in Lokmadan. And my route is either gonna be where I move in the shape of a circle or in the number 8. 
So then I move like this and I'll just cross over all the time. As a horde player, I would definitely recommend your silver pine forest. In a small amount of area, there's a lot of these spawning and you just move as an L and then you go back the same way as you came from. Or you could find these in the barrens where there's also a lot of spawn locations. Then you just move at the western part all the way to the south and then up again to the east. As an alliance I like to farm a wild steel bloom in wetlands as there's a lot of different spawn locations. When you're farming these herbs there's also a chance that you'll get the elemental herb that I will probably keep for phase 2. You can also farm bryophone in the zone at the same time and this is why I like wetlands a lot. As a horde, my go-to zone is the barrens, mainly the southern part where I move in the same shape of a circle. Another way to make gold is to level up alls and then do quests at level 25, as quests will reward you with a lot of silver, yeah in some cases even 1 to 2 gold for each individual quest. Another thing I've also found to be quite decent is to fish right outside the wading currents. Here you have a chance to get the deviate fish that you can sell on the auction house. The price on my server right now is 9 silver for each of these on the alliance side. And on the alliance side you can usually sell these for a bit more compared to the horde. This is because the fish is only found in the barrens. I tried this farm for 30 minutes and I honestly ended up with so many of these fish. So I would highly recommend you to try out this farm also if you are going to level up your fishing. And remember to look out for any of the deviate schools as there is a high chance that you will also get the fish when you are fishing these schools. So after 30 minutes of farming, I had made a total of 49, pretty close to 4.5 gold just by leveling up fishing, pretty decent in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found a new way to make gold in Season of Discovery. In the future I will post more of these videos and also more investment videos, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be one of the first persons to get notified when I post these videos.